And of course, then sometimes it happens some stuff that that uh, you don't know. And for that, it's really important that you trust nobody, not even yourself. That means if um, if a person says yes, he did everything, and then uh, you check it and you see that it's not 100%, it's normal. So for that, you have to um, to control it. So I don't want to completely shut me off of methods for this principle because it's um, you can see this sentence trust nobody from different perspectives. The first one is checking and create everything. So, for example, if a client calls me and said, yeah, there's something, there's a button, it's not working, or I can't log in. So, the first thing is what I'm doing, that I'm checking if it's really like that. Because often, the client forgets the password, and that was the reason why the client can't log in. Or there's a other problem. And before I give this um, issue to my to my developer, I check it before. The same as if a developer gives the issue to me and says, "Okay, I'm finished now. I'm checking um, if the task has been 100% filled." So QA is everything. The second perspective where you can see my my sentence is written instead of spoken commitments. Whereas in OneX Internet, we say an issue is only an issue if you write it down. Because you can say a lot if you are talking, but it's important that it's written down, and then it's a task. The last one is correct understanding and communication. I think everyone knows that, and for project management, it's a really known task. So there are a lot of theories and methods that help to communicate. But again, I don't want to talk about the method. I want to talk about my problems with communication. So for me, uh, if I communicate with clients or also with developers, I'm sometimes using sentences like that. I think you all know this sentence. For me, it's really simple to go to a developer and say, okay, make it nicer. Or, okay, yeah, I want a logo a little bit bigger or less. But if I communicate in such a way, then the opposite can only fail. For me, it's the same with clients. So sometimes clients call me and say, okay, let's do it if it not takes too long. But what is the meaning not takes too long? So for some clients, it means five minutes. For others, five hours. And for others, five days. Also in this situation, I only can fail. So what I try to do to don't use sentences like that is to understand the issue more. I'm using this sentence if I not really know exactly what the client maybe wants from me. And for me, it's simple to use make it nicer um, because if it's not uh, after the development did it and it's not like the client wants, it's easy to blame the developer, but you can't use sentences like that and uh, expect that you get exactly that what the client know, wants if you don't know what the client wants. So if I start to write an issue and I start with one of these this sentences, I stop and I try to think about why I use this sentence and how can I write it better? So, for example, um, just look like we did it last time. Then I try to find the last project and I try to write down exactly what we did the last time. I try to, fill, uh, to find all issues where it's planned what we did the last time. The same with uh, make it nicer. 
I try to understand more the client, uh, what they want, and if the client don't have a really knowledge what they want, I'm sitting together with my developers, and we try to find out together what we are doing to make it nicer. So it's really important that you don't trust a person to do things that you yourself not know exactly how to achieve the result. So the sentence, don't trust anybody, not even myself, uh, helps me to communicate better, to do better QA, and to find out in an early way if something um, happened not correctly. My second uh, principle, people can't be changed. And that's one I'm, I have to learn a lot and I'm still trying to learn it. People have strengths and weaknesses. And for that, I'm working with people, I have to accept that. So for example, me. I'm a person, I'm really organized and punctual. So this session began like at 5 past 12. I was sitting here from quarter to 12 and waiting when the session began. Also with my friends. If I have an appointment with my friends, I'm one hour before our appointment starts, I'm ready and waiting. Of course, uh, people can work on the weaknesses. And also, I'm working on my weaknesses. But I never uh, can completely eliminate, uh, eliminate them. So we have to work with that and we have to accept them. People need, because, uh, because of this reason, people need to um, treat individual that we get the best possible result. So I can be always sad or angry about that, that people have weaknesses or um, that there's a problem that we already talked a lot of times about. But the problem is, or the, 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 the result is, that it doesn't change. So what I have to do or what I have to try is to don't make this weakness to a problem. The typical weakness. If I'm in a, uh, in a session or in, in a meeting with people, they always uh, promise stuff. Of course, it's easy. So if you're in a, in a talk and if you're face to face, you don't want to be the person who says, no, this is not possible. You always try to make it possible. Also, if you forget that you maybe promise the other person already stuff. Or if you have an appointment or there are other stuff, why you can't keep your promise? So you will never change the people. So try to accept that. And if there's a person who always promises stuff what they can't do, try to do what I said to my first principle. Write it down, check it, and try to find out in, the, uh, in an early stage if it's not possible to keep the promise. The second one is forgetting meetings. Especially with developer, they are working normally not with calendars. So sometimes they are working really focusing on a project and they forget everything um, around them. That's normally that what I want. I wanted a be focused and they're working concentrating. But if they forget my meeting, I'm getting annoyed. So what can I do? Uh, I can do the rip of TM and always complaining. So we also have workflows in one X. For example, check every hour in Slack, checking in the beginning of the day your calendar. And I can be like always blaming. You forgot your meeting again. So you have this workflow. Please check every hour your Slack. I can do that. But if I'm doing that, the other person starts to go and defend. 
and that's also not that what I want. So what I'm trying to do with people like that, they say like for better meetings, I remembering, 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 remembering. So in the day, in the morning, I remember, please remember on one o'clock there's a meeting. If we are together in the kitchen, I remember to try that this weakness don't get a problem. Because it's, to uh, it's totally important that you're working like a team. And if I'm the person who always blaming and say, you did that wrong, and why you did it like that, then we are not acting like a team. And then we are working against each other. So the people they are working with me don't feel good with that. And um, you start to be like the person who who tries to work against each other. And I think this is a big problem in a lot of teams that it says, ah, oh, the PM say that and that. Or the PM say, oh, the developers are like that. But we are not the PMs. And we are not the developers. We are a team. And we should be act like a team. To act like a team, um, it's now we come to the title of my session. I try to use stuff from my childhood. So, for example, let everyone decide for themselves. If I remember my childhood, uh, it was possible that my mother said, Okay, um, please, the weather is cold, please put your jacket on or please make the music uh, a little bit um, lower, it's too loud, or one of the special ones of my mother, please clean your room. If she did it like that, I was the person, I made my music louder. I made extra cars in my house, in my, in my room. So if a person says exactly what you have to do, the first reaction is to do exactly the different. But there's another way. So if I have the possibility to decide, I feel much comfortable. For example, do you want to be the red hat or the blue hat because it's cold? I have the decision if I want to have one of the colors. And I don't think about if I want to be a hat at all. So, this I often do with my clients. I have a client that uh, is an intranet, and the importance page of this intranet was a mutant. It looks like that. So, they always create a video, and then it was written down what the meal of the plan is. And they came to me and asked me, okay, it would be nice to have a comment function for this mute now. And of course, I, I see this, this page and it's not a nice page. And what I want to do is uh, to sell a little bit more. So I said, okay, of course, you can have this page with a comment function. Or you get a completely new page with a video function, you can um, like and comment each meal, so you can comment the complete meal plan, and the client could decide if they want the only the comment function, or they want to have like the cool meal plan. Instead of that I'm saying, okay, let's not only do a comment function, let's do it like in a cool way. Listen instead of talking. My parents had different views on how to do, deal with me in my past. So my my father was always the one who scolded me if I did something wrong. And I remember that if I did something wrong, I was always a little bit hmm, afraid if my father came home. And if he came home and he heard that I did something wrong or not like my parents want, then he was the person that came to me and shouted at me. 
Lohina, why you did it like that? Think on your future. If you do it like that, then in the future, blah, blah, blah. So after two words, I had actually stopped listening. Because, okay, let's talk. My mother was um, very difficult. So if I did something wrong, she was the first um, who asked me why I did that and how she can support me to act differently in the next time. So for that I feel much more comfortable because I can um, I could talk to her and explain my, um, yeah, my, my perspective about what I did. So this sentence also helps a lot to act like a team. And it's always hard for me to accept that. If something uh, went wrong in a, in, a, in a project, I want to be like my father. I want to go to, I don't know, to my fashion belief and say, okay, you decided like that, but it's not that what the client want. Or something else that I want to be like my father and shout at him. And I want to say all the stuff what the people went wrong. But this is not the correct way, because if I'm working like that, or if I'm acting like that, the, the person on the, other, on the other side is reacting the same way that I did. So the person starts to defend, the person starts to don't listen to me, and in the end, the result is not better. So what I'm trying is to act like my mom. Especially in Rehfus, I'm waiting for the people that they starting to talk. And sometimes, if they're starting, I see a completely new perspective. I see, see issues that I didn't uh, aware of. And I can understand more why the people maybe act like that. And if I'm working like that, and in, if I'm acting like that, it's easier to be a team and the feeling, uh, to have the feeling to be all together and this is a good way for me to work to with, with a team. So it's hard for me, uh, but if I'm not complaining, this is the best thing what I can do to get the best possible result. Can you now understand why I sometimes feel like a kindergarten teacher? This was my session, and I hope it was interesting for you. And there are questions. Does anyone have any questions? One second. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, any questions? No, no I, we haven't got any questions, I'm afraid. Um, so, oh. um, and I have a question to my group. So, I, um, okay. uh, how do you deal with uh, situations like that if a person don't act like you want or if you have like weaknesses with persons. So how do you try to make that not like to a problem? Any, any thoughts on I think from my yeah. from my perspective um, you have to try and understand why a person is is not doing what you think they should be doing, or um, you know, try and understand what their issue with with doing the thing that they should be doing is, um, and then hopefully sort of negotiate and work through that. Because if if somebody's not doing something, then there's obviously some reason why why they're not doing it, um, and you perhaps got to get get deeper to understand why they're not doing it, rather than just sort of say. Well, that's, that's tough. 
Sorry, I have a question. You may like to relay for Dorina? Do you want to come around? So, Dorina. Hi, Dorina. <laughs> Greetings. Um, so, so I'm curious in your opinion about the challenges with remote teams. So it's one thing to have people in front of you uh, say, sitting in the same meeting room because like, you see their body language, their reaction. So how do you solve the issue with uh, remote teams? This is a really good question because this is a big challenge for me. Um, especially because if I'm only writing, I'm um, punctual or strict. So sometimes if I'm starting with teams and they didn't know me, they feel that I'm a little bit more not nice and like not friendly. So for me, this is exactly a huge um, challenge for me. So what I try to to do it better is teams they are remotely. And how you saw in the beginning of my presentation, I work with a lot of people they are working remotely. So first thing is to video um, conference as much as possible. So especially with people they are uh, remotely, it's exactly what you say. So if you're only writing, it's not that easy to communicate. So you don't see the face, you don't see or hear the voice if the person um, yeah, is angry or sad or have other uh, emotions. So I try to do video calls at, as much as possible. And I also try so to be a team. Um, it's more than working together. So with my team in my office is of course easier because we do the lunch time and we're talking about private stuff. And um, then it's easier to be a team. With people that are working remotely, it's hard to, to have this. So I try also to communicate with them a little bit privately. So like this direct messages and ask, okay, how's you feeling today? And uh, to get there a little bit more like tea. Yeah. Like, like we do today here at the camp. <laughs> we have many remote sessions actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This has been a, a big challenge in many ways, but thank you for, for giving your talk in this way. Um, yeah. But I think we're all learning through the experience. And maybe this is the way we'll all work in the coming months, too, you know, a lot of the time. Yeah. Any other questions or thoughts? Or... Okay, thanks very much, Darina. Well... Thank you. Have a thanks. nice weekend. Bye. Have a lovely weekend yourself. Bye. Bye.